At Snake River Base Academy, we have over a decade of experience in helping new base jumpers safely reach their goals. If you're here, then you've already taken the first step. Please study or ideally pack along with these videos before your course so that you can spend more time jumping and less time struggling to pack. Also, please don't share these videos with anyone who is not enrolled in the course. Pay attention and good luck. Welcome to the Snake River Base Academy's packing demonstration video. In this video, we'll run through one complete pack job using only one style from start to finish slider down. The purpose of this pack job demonstration is to show you how to do one pack job so that you can study and practice before a course. If you want to see more options or other ways to pack, we recommend watching the entire packing video, which is available in segments on YouTube. There will be three basic principles of the pack job, which will guide us through the packing process. The first is to maintain line tension and control at all times. The second is to keep the lines centered in the pack job with the fabric outside the lines. And the third is to maintain symmetry between the left and right sides of the pack job. As we move through the pack job, there will be four safety checkpoints at which you should stop and double check your work. The first is the brake settings. The second safety checkpoint is the tailgate. The third safety checkpoint is the locking stow under the tail pocket. And the last safety checkpoint is the bridle routing of the container. We'll come back to each of these safety checkpoints in depth as we reach them in the packing process. Count your tools to make sure that you have them all and they are all accounted for. In this pack job we'll use two pull-up cords, five two-inch spring clamps, and four bungee tensioners. First, lay out your rig in the packing area. Take the rig out of the bag. And stretch the lines across the packing area. tension or weight the container to allow you to establish line tension. You may not have hooks in your floor to tension your rig from. If that's the case, you can improvise with almost any weight. We can use a simple weight to hold the pack tray. If you're packing outdoors, a tent stake can be driven through the rings or through the leg straps to tension. Grasp the rig as if pro packing, laying the lines through your fingers on the left and right side. Walk forward to clear the lines and verify that you don't have any obvious issues like a step through or a cross toggle. For delays of 4 seconds or less, you'll want to configure a rig slider down. When we reconfigure for slider down, we want to make sure that the control lines are free, the slider is trapped below the front bumpers, the tailgate is in place, and we're using an appropriate pilot chute for the delay. To trap the slider in a slider down configuration, we'll move the front slider grommets below the front riser bumpers. Remove the bumper. Push the slider below the link and replace the bumper above the slider grommet, trapping the slider below the link. Be sure to repeat this process on the other front riser. Note that you should never trap the rear slider grommets below the bumpers because of the chance that the slider grommet can entangle or dislodge the toggle. Reroute the control lines outside the slider grommets and the keeper rings. Remove the toggle, 
past the control line free of the slider grommet and keeper ring and replace the toggle. Repeat this process on the other control line. Rather than a sewn loop, many modern base rigs have a free end to the control line. To attach a toggle to this free end, simply tie an overhand knot in the line at the position that you want the toggle to take. Bend the line over in a loop above the knot and pass the loop through the grommet on the toggle. Then pass the handle of the toggle through the loop and pull. The knot should act as a backstop, securing the toggle onto the line. With this system, the toggle position can easily be changed by simply adjusting the position of the knot and sliding the toggle up or down the line. To insert the tailgate, simply find the tailgate attachment, gently pull the retaining band out away from the line, and insert the tailgate into position. Pull the line to tighten the retaining band and hold the tailgate. During the packing process, it's important to keep the two risers even and symmetric, so the two sides of the canopy sit evenly. To do this, we will tie the three ring assemblies together. Pass a pull-up cord through the slot of the base ring on both sides. And tie the pull-up cord tight to keep the risers even. Option, clamp those bitches. There are many methods of leveling the risers, and any of them work. Many jumpers prefer to simply clamp the risers themselves together below the links, or even to clamp the links together to hold the risers even. To perform the four line check on the left side, First, set the canopy with its nose to the left. Pick up the rear risers and the control lines in your right hand, and the front risers in your left hand. Walk forward, and shift the canopy so the nose is pointed to the left. To perform the four line check, find the left riser set, lift it, and identify the far left line on both the front and the rear left risers. These should lead to the left A and B and C and D lines. Hold the left control line in your other hand. Walk forward and verify that there are no other lines passing over the top of the left side A, B, C, and D lines. Straighten the control line as you move back towards the container. Next, choose the correct brake setting for your configuration and delay. If there are multiple brake settings on your line, you need to choose which one to use for this pack job. The brake setting closest to the toggle is called factory shallow or simply shallow. This brake setting will be used for all slider up jumps. The next brake setting on the line is called factory deep or simply deep. 
This brake setting is used for slider down jumps from objects which are not solid, such as bridges or antennas where you may encounter tailwind during deployment. If there is a third custom setting on the line, this is the setting closest to the tail of the canopy and it is called custom deep or customized deep brake setting. This setting is used only by the jumper whose body weight this setting was tested for and only for solid slider down objects. Next, set the brakes. This rig is slider down, so we'll use the factory deeper setting. Take the white loop, pass it through the brake setting, then through the keeper ring. Then take the toggle and pass it through the white loop. Set the toggle into the keeper, velcro the toggle, grasp the line and pre-tension the brake setting and then stow the excess in the keeper system. Next, perform a four-line check on the right side of the canopy. Grasp the rear risers and control lines in your left hand and the front risers in your right hand. Walk forward and set the canopy down with its nose facing to the right. By lifting the right riser set and finding the far right line on the front riser, and the far right line on the rear riser along with the right control line. Walk these lines forward and lift them verifying that there are no other lines over the top. Then straighten the control line as you return to the container. to remove any twists that may be in your control line. Now set the right brake, find the deeper brake setting for slider down, pass the white loop through the brake setting, then through the keeper ring. Pass the toggle through the white loop and into the elastic keeper. Set the velcro of the toggle, grasp and pre-tension the control line, and stow the excess in the excess keeper system. We've reached the first safety checkpoint. We need to verify that our brakes are properly and evenly set. To verify the brakes, find the white loop and confirm that it passes through the line, then the ring, and then the toggle. Check both sides to be sure that the white loop passes through line, then ring, then toggle. After you've checked the white loop, bring the two control lines together and inspect them to see if there are any additional brake settings above the toggle. You should have the same number of brake settings above the toggle on both lines. In this case, there are zero brake settings above the toggle, so the lines are set evenly. Lay the canopy on its side with the nose facing to the right. Lift the rear risers and control lines in your left hand and the front risers in your right hand. Walk forward, lift the canopy, and set it down on the side with the nose facing to the right. To begin flaking the top skin, take four clamps and position one above each line group, A, B, C, and D.
Then clamp the top skin of the canopy directly above the line group. Make sure that you have all seven cells inside the clamp. When clamping the A lines, find the point directly above the line attachments. For the B, C, and D lines, the packing tab has been sewn directly above the line attachment. Simply count the packing tabs to verify that you have all seven. And clamp the fabric immediately below the packing tabs. Repeat this process for each line group. Dress the nose by rolling the outside three cells back until you are directly above the A-line attachment and tucking them inside one edge of the center cell. Repeat the process with the other side, tucking them into the opposite side of the nose. Be careful to maintain the center rib of the canopy between the two rolls. This joint, where the center rib meets the bottom skin, is the symmetric center of the canopy and should always remain centered throughout the pack job. After you've rolled the nose, clamp the top of the rolls with your A-line. Begin stacking the canopy by grasping the A-line clamp and positioning the canopy nose down as if it's flying into the ground in the same orientation as the pack tray. Apply a tensioner to the A-line clamp and bring it to your tension point to establish tension throughout the entire A-line group. Now stack the B, C, and D line groups on top of the A-line group. To move the line groups, place a knee or toe on top of the clamp, grasp just forward of the next clamp, pull back to tension the lines. Place your opposite hand above the center cell. As you make this motion, pull your left hand towards the ceiling and keep your right hand low to the floor and maintaining line tension. This should be one smooth motion. Once your right hand reaches the center, hold the clamp stationary and flip the AB, line, AB fabric fold to clear it. Finally, split the center cell to make sure that it's evenly distributed between the left and right sides of the canopy. Then, tension the B lines to your tension point. Continue this process for the C and D line groups. Be careful to keep the bridle attachment clear and centered when moving the B, C fold. Now, the right side of the canopy is neatly flaked in three folds, A to B, B to C, and C to D. To maintain symmetry, you have to flake the left side of the canopy the same. 
first grasp the tail and throw it across out of the way to expose the left side folds. Then straighten the left side folds by flipping them with the same motion used on the right side. First the AB fold, then the BC fold, then the CD fold. Next, flake the bottom skin of the canopy. To expose the bottom skin, we need to split the tail by bringing the left side control line and tail to the left, and the tail pocket to the center and up out of the way. The right side control line and tail should remain on the right side. We should now be able to see into the bottom skin of the canopy. To establish a clear air channel, walk to your container, Split the risers to the left and right side and find the channel between them. Follow the channel back up into the canopy. Run your hand between the line groups up to the center of the canopy. Your hand should stop on the symmetric center joint of the canopy where the center rib meets the bottom skin. This is the symmetric center of the canopy and should stay centered throughout the packing process. Next, flake between the line groups. First, locate the A-line groups on one side. Be sure to have all four A-lines and the B-lines. Then, insert your hand and flatten and flake the fabric between the A and B-lines. Repeat the process between the B and C-lines and between the C and D-lines. You may find it necessary to tension some of the lines by hand, especially the D-lines, if the brake settings on the canopy are fairly deep. Repeat the flaking process on the other side of the canopy. Flaking A and B, B and C, and C and D. When flaking the canopy, your goal is to have the center cell cover all of the outside cells and to have this seam travel at a 90 degree angle to the lines. So when I look into the center, I should see only the center cell, none of the outside cells, and this seam should travel straight across. Next, close the tailgate. To identify the lines of the tailgate, begin with the center C-line that has the tailgate attached. Move straight across and grasp the other center C-line. Run your hand down to the cascade and lift the two center D-lines that are attached. Bring all four of these lines back and verify that they are inside the tailgate. Then, take the control lines one at a time and move them into the tailgate as well. Fold the tailgate around the line bundle, take an appropriate tailgate rubber band and wrap it three or four times around the tailgate. We do not recommend tying the tailgate, the tailgate rubber band to the tailgate because it increases the chance for a tailgate hang up. Instead, simply wrap the rubber band repeatedly around the tailgate and accept that you may lose a rubber band on every jump. These rubber bands cost less than a cent apiece and are available pre-cut from the manufacturer, so there's no real reason to try to save them. Next, we must perform a safety check on the tailgate. To safety check the tailgate, Verify that the line the tailgate is attached to is inside the bundle. The keeper band should be outside with the red line inside. Then, follow the bundle and make sure that it is clear all the way to the risers with no other lines wound into it.
Some jumpers prefer to use masking tape in place of a tailgate. If you choose to use masking tape, identify the line group exactly the same way that you would when closing the tailgate. Then, wrap the tailgate bundle with masking tape. Place the tape as high as possible on the lines without capturing fabric in the tape. Wrap three or four times around the entire line bundle. Next, stack the tail neatly to prepare for folding. Bring the entire tail to one side. Center the stabilizer and stack the tail one fold at a time on top of the corresponding side. When you reach the tail pocket itself, switch and stack the other side of the tail. Again, start with the stabilizer, centering the stabilizer seam and line, and stack each tail fold individually on top of the previous fold. Next, we have to bring the tail pocket down to the base of the pack job in order to stow the lines. To move the tail pocket, first detach the clamp which holds the D-lines so the tail pocket can be moved. Grasp the tail pocket in your left hand or right hand. Grasp the tail pocket in one hand. Grasp the next seam with the other hand. Bring this seam part way down. Bring the tail pocket the rest of the way down to the base of the pack job. Next, free the container so that you can stow the lines. Place your weight on the pack tray, loosen the leg strap, and remove it from the tension point. Gradually release the container so as not to induce slack in the lines. Next, stow the lines. Begin by inspecting the stow band under the locking stow. Verify the stow band is in good condition and will survive to line stretch during this deployment. Open the tail pocket. Grasp the first bite of line and lock it in the locking stow. Wrap this stow tightly enough that it will survive until the pack job reaches line stretch during the deployment, but not so tight that it will be under tension during the hike or the climb so much that it breaks prematurely. One or two wraps is usually sufficient. Next, take the locking stow bite and place it in the pocket underneath the tail pocket to contain it. To stow the line groups, position yourself on the canopy with the tail pocket between your legs. Move your hands symmetrically and evenly. Keep your palms down and your thumbs pointed in throughout this process. First, bring a group of lines straight up the middle and form the first stow. Then, continue forming loops as you gather the lines into the tail pocket. Each loop should be slightly smaller and slightly closer to the mouth of the tail pocket to reduce the entanglement chance.
bring the lynx tight up to the mouth of the tail pocket. If you need to pull a little line out while stowing the, the canopy in the pack tray, you can always pull a little line back out. Next, close the tail pocket around the line groups. Seal the bottom Velcro first on both sides. Then, seal the Velcro on the side of the tail pocket. Be careful not to catch lines inside the Velcro. After you've sealed the sides, re-verify the bottom Velcro. The canopy now has to be narrowed to fit into the pack tray. There are many different methods of narrowing the canopy, and virtually all of them work, so long as they are symmetric from the left to the right. The simplest method is to use a tilly fold. Simply fold the outside of the canopy into the center. Bring the outside of the fold to the center stitch line of the tail. To keep the fold here, clamp across the outside. Remove the clamps from the line groups and transfer them down to the side. Repeat the process on the other side. It's easiest to leave one clamp on the A-lines and use an extra clamp to hold the narrowing folds. Next, prepare the pack tray to receive the canopy. First, untie or detach your risers so that you can spread them to shoulder width. Carefully move the risers out without pulling lines out of the tail pocket. Transfer the pull-up cord to the closing loop so that it's ready for use. At the same time, insert the other pull-up cord into the bottom closing loop. Now, spread the pack tray as widely open as possible. So that it's ready to accept the canopy. Next, bring the canopy and the pack tray together. Firmly grasp the base of the canopy around the lines so that you don't pull any out of the tail pocket. Put your other hand on the top of the pack tray. Create tension between your two hands to maintain the riser straight and move the pack tray underneath the canopy. Carefully place the corners of the canopy into the lower corners of the pack tray and inspect your risers to make sure that they haven't twisted or crossed during the moving process. To fold the canopy into the pack tray, we'll need to detach the remaining tensioner from the tension frame and lift the canopy. Make the first fold just below the top of the pack tray. This fold should expose the center cell at the nose. Next, dress the nose of the canopy, being certain to keep the symmetric center centered within the pack tray. First remove the A-line clamp, then find the center rib. Follow the center rib to the top skin tape and spread the top skin tape around the outside edges of the pack job. Verify that the symmetric center junction is sitting centered within the canopy.
after treating the nose, fold the canopy again into the pack tray. Next, close the container. Begin by verifying that the bridle attachment point is clear of all canopy fabric. It's important that the bridle not snag the canopy during extraction because that can turn the canopy and cause off headings. Be sure the bridle attachment point is completely clear. Control the canopy and remove the clamps. Then, Bring the top flap over the top of the canopy and route the bridle appropriately for your container. Close the top pin, being careful not to spin or twist the canopy as you bring container flaps in. If your rig has a Velcro tab on the bridle, be sure that the Velcro is mated and clear so they can always release during the extraction process. Then, close the bottom flap. It's easiest to position the corners by hand before pulling the loops. Next, remove the pull-up cords, being careful not to wear your closing loop by passing the pull-up cord underneath the pin. Ensure that your Velcro tab allows slack for the pins to extract. And route the bridle in the bridle channel to the BOC. Verify that your bridle routing is correct. Every rig has a recommended bridle routing from the manufacturer, and if possible, you should follow this bridle routing. If you're not sure what the recommended bridle routing for your rig is, you can test the opening sequence by simply pulling on the bridle to verify that the container will open. On a two pin rig with a crossover style pin flap, the bridle should be routed out the center between the pins. Because the crossover style pin flap does not have the potential to entangle the bridle, the bridle can be completely hidden and need not cross over the top of the pin cover flap. Next, stow the pilot chute. It's helpful to use a tool, such as a magazine, to assist. First, position the magazine below the BOC and make sure there are no twists in your bridle. When you reach the pilot chute, move your hand around the mesh until you reach the junction of the mesh and the ZP portion of the pilot chute. This pack is called a mushroom pack because the pilot chute resembles a mushroom at this point during the packing process. Take the mushroom pilot chute, invert it, and place the cap 
down against the ground. Place the calf at the edge of the BOC where it will sit after it's packed. In this way, we can use the BOC as a measuring guide to fold the pilot chute. Leave the ZP in a circle and fold the mesh to the bottom of the BOC. S fold the bridle on top of the mesh. Fold the mesh around the bridle and bring the ZP down around the mesh. Now, roll the magazine around the pilot chute. To insert the pilot chute into the BOC. Once the pilot chute is in place, simply remove the magazine. If you have excess bridle, you can tuck the bridle inside the BOC between the pilot chute and the bottom wall of the container. Next, place the packed rig into the stash bag. Always keep your rig in a stash bag and the stash bag with the rig. Once you have the rig in the stash bag, mark the outside of the stash bag in some way to show how the rig is packed. Once you've finished packing, it's important to verify your tool count to ensure that you've not left any tools inside your pack job. At the end of the pack job, you should have exactly the same tools that you had at the beginning. In this case, we have five two-inch spring clamps, two pull-up cords, and four bungee tensioners. We hope this video has been useful to you learning how to pack. Please remember that there are a lot of different ways to learn to pack and a lot of different pack jobs. This is just one method. We like this method for students because we find it's the easiest way for a new jumper to get a good pack job. Remember, when packing parachutes, you get out of it exactly what you put into it. Taking a little time now to review this video and develop a solid pack job is a lot less painful than the alternative.